All right, let me just say my quick goodbyes. Uh, thank you so much for having watched Morning Live. We'll see you bright and early on Monday morning. You have yourself a beautiful weekend and keep warm. Now it's back to the Hilton Hotel in Senton. That is where Leanne and the panel are. Thanks very, very much, Peleza. Have a great weekend as well. We'll see you next week. Now, continuing with the final segment of, uh, of talking to the women in sciences and some of these extraordinary women who are doing extraordinary things. Uh, we've been joined by another guest on the stage, Kinil Wechlehane, who is a DST Fellowship recipient. Welcome. So good to have you here with us. And congratulations for, uh, for winning uh, that wonderful cash injection that's going to help you so much. Thank you very much, Leanne. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm going to talk to you in a short while, but before the break, I was actually uh, alluding to finding that cure for AIDS. You, we, we know there's a vaccine trial that's currently underway. It was developed here in South Africa. Give us an update, uh, Minister. What's happening with that? Well, um, the trial is a multi-country uh, uh, set of clinical trials. It's in the first phase at the moment, but it's very exciting that there's a candidate vaccine uh, that is being tested by a range of scientists. And we're really fortunate that South Africa has several uh, scientists that have been involved in uh, trying to develop both uh, drugs as well as prevention uh, uh, tools uh, to support women to prevent uh, infection with HIV. But this point we're at now is one of the most exciting uh, points, that it's actually a candidate vaccine uh, that is being trialed, and we're, we're really looking forward uh, to the outcomes of that study. And of course, South Africa has a number of women scientists who are leaders uh, in the HIV research field, among them being uh, Professor Glenda Gray, yes. the president of the Medical Research Council, who was uh, identified as one of the top 100 uh, influential persons in the Time uh, magazine of 2017. So, um, you know, South Africa ranks uh, among uh, the best in terms of research uh, in the HIV domain. Yeah. And I think what Professor was speaking of earlier, looking at the multiple uh, uh, social factors um, that are, you know, related to this disease and factors that we sometimes ignore, is a very important work uh, that we all need uh, to pay much more attention to because uh, we tend to regard uh, the disease as one of knowing the numbers almost, whether you're infected or not, and then um, using condoms so you prevent um, our ABC strategies. We don't look at it in terms of the multiple social dimensions, the complex social factors that have been referred to um, and that are part of uh, the work that Professor is doing. Amazing, it really is. Um, we'll watch it very, very closely. I just want to incorporate Kinewe into the conversation now because um, let me read a little bit just for our viewers to, to understand where you're coming from. You've got your BSc in Geology, and that's from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, followed by a BSc Honours in Geographic Information Systems at UCT, and you're currently enrolled for an MSc in GIS and Remote Sensing. What is that? <laughs> I, I sounded so intelligent until I asked you what that actually was. Um, that's amazing. Talk to me about this. Well, basically, uh, in simple terms, uh, geographic information systems is the science of way. Um, right now, you would want to know where you're located and what attributes are there to it. And it's a tool that can be applied across various sectors. So in business, if you want to find where to locate your next store, if you want to open it, it's way. Who are you going to target? And mainly in sciences, we look at your spatial analysis. It's like your species diversity. We map the vegetation map of South Africa. So basically, in short, geographic information systems is the science of where we answer all those questions. The science of where. So <laughs> you, you, I mean, obviously, and I've asked this to all of our our, our, our young young entrants this year coming into this industry. Uh, this this it could. Was it an easy journey for you, or were, were your parents questioning you? Were your friends questioning you? Were the guys around you questioning you? I mean, what was it like? What's the journey been like for you? 
Well, my parents will question me, and definitely I don't think they still understand what I do on a daily basis. I'm sure not. <laughs> <laughs> a very select few people understand what you do. <laughs> yes, they don't understand what I do on a daily basis. All they know is that I'm in the field of science. And um, coming in into the field of geographic information systems, having male colleagues most of the time, it's a bit difficult for them to understand us as females. And they always undermine you up until you step in and prove yourself. So as a um, female in this industry, you constantly have to work twice as hard just to be recognized. But the journey has been wonderful so far with the support from the DST in terms of the scholarships and bursaries that they give us young scholars to advance in science. What, what do your classes look like? I mean, when you when you start out, um, do you find that, that there is equality when it comes to male and female representatives? Or is it still very male dominated? It's still very much male dominated because I remember in my honours year there were only three girls okay. in the entire year. So but, but did it start out as only three girls or did you see it sort of fizzle out, the numbers fizzle out as the years went through? No, in honours it was just three girls so just started that and way. 17 guys. Okay. So we had to survive with that but now also coming into the industry, having to work with people, your mentor will be a male, your manager that you report to will be a male and then you end up questioning yourself as a girl would I make it to that level yeah. will I end up heading the department if I'm in this yeah. industry or do I belong here I mean <laughs> you know as we were talking about it last night and professor I'm going to bring you into the conversation because uh, not to not to age you but uh, we, we, <laughs> we we are slightly slightly older than than uh, you know we're sitting over there but you know you're listening to this three uh, young girls now in this I mean this we're talking last when when did you do your honors when I did my honors in, was in um, okay I started in 2016 in 2015 okay yeah. so it's two years ago yeah. this is two years ago you were in varsity a, a couple more years before that <laughs> what was the, what did it look like then it was actually not too different, uh, but I think in medical sciences the balance between men and women are a bit different, so there are more women. Yeah. But um, since we are talking a bit about aging now, I think what happens also is that we often see women starting to study medicine or similar, similar fields, and then as soon as they finish their studies, they fall out. As soon as they get pregnant or get married, yeah. uh, then it becomes male-dominated as well. So there are, of course, challenges. First of all, to get stu your, your studies funded, to get through that, but then later on to maintain that level of science once you've actually managed to get your degree and get a, get a good job. Yeah. So uh, I think there's a lot of things that uh, we need to take care of women. And uh, my main message would be that women need to believe in themselves. When it's male dominated or not, if you believe in yourself and, and you know that you know what you're talking about, just keep on doing it and you will actually get there. You just mm -hmm. never say die. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, we're wrapping up now, we've got three more minutes, so I just want to ask you a question, Professor, and then I'll leave it to you, Minister, to wrap it up. I mean, doing research in HIV and AIDS um, with rather marginalized communities in rural areas as a woman, I mean, your work can't be easy either. Yes, it was not easy uh, because at first I remember one of my supervisor even saying, why are you advocating for these people? It's like you are promoting LGBTI. And she even said, let me confess, I've gone to church and make a prayer request for you so that <laughs> they should pray that you stop this nonsense sure. of supporting LGBTI because it's like you want to bring to, to, to change our children to LGBTI. So I realized that there is still a lot which needs to be done, yeah. uh, even to the healthcare professionals, because we, we are, I think we are the face in prevention of HIV. But if we're still discriminating against uh, non -gen gender non-confirming individual and uh, uh, s people of sexual diversity, it, it means we're not going to win. Because some of uh, the students were even referred to the psychologist to say they need to be changed. And I remember one girl who came dressed in the most innovative manner I've ever seen because it, it was just a combination. Then when she came, I said, what is your sexual orientation? 
she said, to tell you the honest fact, I'm a lesbian. Yeah. But I've been referred to the psychologist, I'm even taking the treatment. And later when I realized, I realized that this woman might be an intersex. Absolutely. Because she was not even menstruating, but uh, there the, is a lot which is going on there. And yeah. she was forced to have a boyfriend. Amazing, and that's not what you felt. I, I could talk to you all morning, but I can't. In the interest of time, unfortunately. Isn't she so fascinating? Uh, Minister, I'm going to give you 30 minutes, uh, 30, 30 minutes, 30 seconds, 30 seconds to wrap it up for us. I mean, this is what you're talking about, the inspiration from these women and the work they're doing. Well, firstly, uh, what I'd like to do is thank SABC for profiling uh, science in this way, uh, because I'm sure these women appreciate the recognition uh, that they're getting. And South Africans are hearing about what South Africa is doing. Uh, very positive news. Yeah. I think this is absolutely brilliant. And I'm so proud uh, to work with women scientists of this caliber. Yeah. So, you know, thanks for that. The second would be we're aware of the challenges uh, that some of the women confront because of the multiple demands uh, on women. So we've begun to uh, look at establishing fellowships through the National Research Foundation, which would be grants that would support women who go on leave, on family leave, so that uh, a replacement would be funded and they should not lose the positions uh, that they occupy. So we're aware of the gender dimension Excellent. that does impact on women's lives. But what again, thank you very, very much. It's an absolute pleasure. We leave it there for this morning. A great, inspiring note. I hope to start you on this weekend. Have a beautiful weekend. Stay warm, and we'll see you again on Monday. God bless you all. Shabbat shalom.